You would think that when strapped to a gurney, knowing the life force in you is about to expire, you'd want to say something nice to someone, or profound, or perhaps apologize to the family of the victim that's watching your demise. Then again, if you were an innocent person about to have his veins filled with a lethal cocktail, you might not be in the mood to deliver a tender speech. You might also be a ruthless and heartless psychopath that wants to fill the air one last time with your monstrous voice. As you'll now find out, that has happened, and it might send shivers down your spine hearing what they said. First up, Richard Aaron Cobb. Cobb was executed by lethal injection in 2013 in Texas. His crime was walking into a convenience store with an accomplice and robbing it. It didn't stop there. They took two female employees and one male customer and forced them into a car. They took them to a secluded place and shot them execution style, and then drove away thinking they were all dead. Only the man actually died. His last words were very strange, starting out nihilistic. He then finished with something very surprising. I hope that someday this absurdity that humanity has come to will come to an end. And then seconds later after he started to pass away. Wow, this is great. Thank you, Warden. This next one is slightly more gruesome. John Wayne Gacy. You all know the story of this man, and we won't go into detail about what he did. He murdered 33 people in the 70s and hid many of the bodies under his house. He is one of the USA's worst serial killers. His last words show that he had no remorse whatsoever. They were, kiss my… Uh, we can't say that last word, otherwise the video will get demonetized. But we are sure you can guess what it is. There's no cursing in this next one, but we think you'll agree it's pretty darn dark. Peter Kürten. You've never heard of this guy, we bet. He was a German serial killer at a time where there were few of them about in Germany. That was the early 20th century. He killed at least nine people and did terrible things with the bodies. One other thing was that he drank the blood of his victims, and that's why he was sometimes named the Vampire of Dusseldorf. In 1931, he was beheaded by guillotine, and just before that happened, he looked at his psychiatrist and said, tell me after my head has been chopped off, will I still be able to hear, at least for a moment, the sound of my own blood gushing from the stump of my neck? That would be the pleasure to end all pleasures. Before the blade came down, the psychiatrist replied, no. Eileen Warnos. This woman you might have seen portrayed in a Hollywood movie called Monster. She worked selling her body on the streets and killed six of her male customers. She claimed she was defending herself, but that didn't hold up in court. She's now known as one of America's worst female serial killers. She was executed in 2002, and just before that, she promised she'd come back to life again. She said, I just like to say I'm sailing with the rock, and I'll be back like Independence Day with Jesus June 6th, like the movie Big Mothership and all. I'll be back. Sticking with serial murderers, this next monster fits the bill. Carl Panzram. This guy was a serial killer in the US at the start of the 20th century. He committed murders among many other despicable things. He said he had killed 22 people in all. He was sentenced to be hanged in 1930 and just before the executioner put the cover on his head, he spat in his face. He was asked if he had any last words. This is how he replied, yes, hurry it up you Hoosier bastard, I could kill a dozen men while you're screwing around. In case you're wondering, a Hoosier is someone from the state of Indiana. Up next is arguably the funniest on this list, James French. French killed two people in the late 50s and mid 60s in the USA. One of those people was his cellmate. The two didn't get along very well. His actual last words when sitting in the electric chair were, there's nothing else to say. But the last thing he said to a reporter was this, if I were covering my execution, do you know what I'd say in the newspaper headline tomorrow? The reporter said, what? He answered, French fries. Yep, that was amusing. We think this next guy was also attempting to make a joke. Jeffrey Matthews. Matthews shot and killed his uncle during a robbery, and he was executed in 2011 in Oklahoma because of that. His last words aren't exactly frightening, but his dark sense of humor at the end is perhaps a little bit shocking. He said a few things, but his very last words were, I think that governor's phone is broke, he hasn't called yet. Robert Charles Comer. You can say the same about this man. At the end, he either had a twisted sense of humor or was on another planet, mentally speaking. In 1987, he killed a man, but he had also committed some other serious crimes throughout his life. When he asked if he wanted to say something at the end, he said, Go Raiders! That's in reference to an American football team. Such a statement, you might assume, encapsulates how little he thought about himself and life and his victims. Robert Alton Harris 
Alton was executed in California in 1992 for multiple murders. He'd been a career criminal with a long rap sheet, although his killing of two boys is why he got the gas chamber. He was incredibly heartless if you read his story, but we won't go into it today. At the end, he became poetic, his last words being, you can be a king or a street sweeper, but everybody dances with the Grim Reaper. He's not wrong about that. He's not as amusing as the next person, though. Vincent Gutierrez. This guy was executed in Texas in 2007 after being found guilty of killing a man. Gutierrez had been trying to steal the man's car and then shot him in the back. He was under the age of 18 when it happened. He said a few things for his last words and apologized for what he had done, but then he finished it off by saying, where's my stunt double when you need one? John William Rook Rook believed his difficult childhood was the reason he committed a murder in 1980 in the US. He had 12 hot dogs for his last meal, and then just before they took his life away, he thanked them and said, freedom, freedom at last. James W. Rogers Rogers was sentenced to death after killing a fellow worker at a uranium mine in 1957. The two had fallen out over quite a big issue, and that was how a scoop shovel should be properly greased. They didn't see eye to eye regarding the grease, and Rogers shot the other man. He was sentenced to death by firing squad. When Rogers was ready to have the firing squad finish his life, he was asked if he had any final words. His reply was, I done told you my last request, a bulletproof vest. Charlie Livingston In 1983, this man shot and killed a woman in Houston during a robbery. He didn't seem to see the point of final words when the time came and he made that point, saying, you all brought me here to be executed, not to make a speech, that's it. That was simple enough, quite different from what's coming up. Douglas Roberts this man from Texas was quite the opposite, and he had quite a lot to say on the day of his execution by lethal injection in 2005. He'd been found guilty of kidnapping, robbery, and murder. When the time came for his last words, he said, I've been hanging around this popsicle stand way too long. Before I leave, I want to tell you all, when I die, bury me deep, lay two speakers at my feet, put some headphones on my head, and rock and roll me when I'm dead. The media later reported that he was upbeat and animated before his execution. Frederick Wood Wood was another joker, albeit with a dark sense of humor. He was put to the electric chair in 1963 for the crime of murder. When asked what his final words would be, he replied, Gents, this is an educational project. You're about to witness the damaging effect electricity has on Wood. The next couple of people you could say are unique on this list. Mary Blandy now we're going really back in time, and this is the story of an English woman whose father didn't approve of her relationship. She looked to poison to deal with this problem. She was hanged in 1752, and at the time she was wearing a dress. She was worried people might look up the dress, even though it wouldn't matter much after she was dead. Still, she told the executioner, for the sake of decency, gentlemen, don't hang me high. Sarah Good now we go even farther back to the Salem Trials in Massachusetts in 1692. Good was in her 30s when she was accused of being a witch and then sentenced to death. All 12 jurors agreed that she had to be a witch. She was accused of lacking in self-discipline and being a servant of the devil. She had only challenged locals regarding their very strict Puritan values, but they had said that that made her in league with Satan. The Reverend Nicholas Noyes was there at the end and still tried to get her to confess, and she of course refused. Her last words were, I'm no more a witch than you are a wizard, and if you take away my life, God will give you blood to drink. 25 years later, Noyes had an aneurysm, and as the story goes, he coughed up blood and choked on it. We should say this is what's called popular legend. But as the witch trials were so terrible, we imagine many people might hope it happened. While these witch trials were madness to the highest degree, Mary's husband at least sued the courts for what's happened to her, and he won. Now we go back to the present day and a couple of guys that look death straight in the eye. Clarence Ray Allen this man was executed in California for killing three people. He was executed in 2006 when he was the ripe old age of 76. He was very sick at the time, and a lot of people wondered why the death sentence, since it seemed he didn't have much time left anyway. His last words were, Hoka hey, it's a good day to die. Melvin White White had committed the terrible crime of murdering a child, and he was executed in Texas in 2005. We won't go into the details, but what he did shocked a lot of people. Not many folks felt sorry for this man as he went to the gurney for his dose of lethal drugs. He did say he was sorry for what he did and then said, all right, warden, let's give them what they want. The next couple of people you might say didn't sit too well in their chair of death. Tory Twain McNabb In 2017, this man was given lethal injection in the state of Alabama. He'd been convicted of killing a police officer. He and his lawyers had tried to stop it going through by saying the punishment was cruel and unusual, but that didn't work. 
He went to the gurney an angry man and with both his hands he pointed two middle fingers in the air. He then said, Mom, sis, look at my eyes. I got no tears. I'm unafraid. To the state of Alabama, I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Thomas J. Grasso We have perhaps saved the strangest last words to last. And this was the execution of a man that had been convicted of two murders of elderly women. He was given lethal injection in the state of Oklahoma in 1995. He wrote a short poem before his death and part of it went like this. The warden will read my last creed and the deadly brew will flow as the poison drips into my veins and from my body life does drain. But his last words were in the form of a very practical complaint. We guess he was being ironic. Those words were, I did not get my SpaghettiOs. I got spaghetti. I want the press to know this. Our last words on this topic are that you need to watch one of our other great episodes of the Infographics Show right now. Either this video here or click on this one here. Time's running out, so choose now.